All right, we've got a lizard lunar landscape here. Got this project uh, built in a certain scale that's appropriate for a gecko or a tarantula, even though if you just saw part one, there was starring a bearded dragon. Um, you could always scale this project up. See, it's got a little hide here in the lunar module. The lunar module is hollow. So it's providing a hide plus uh, plus exercise, plus a basking spot. So whether you are creating this for a lizard or a tarantula, or you're creating this maybe because you have a science project, uh, watch and see how I build this lunar landscape. First you want to wear one of these dust masks, protect you from the dust. What I'm doing here is measuring out on a sheet of polystyrene. And these sheets don't or didn't come wide enough, so I ended up using two. Um, show you later in the video here. What I'm doing is cutting out the second piece to effectively widen the landscape. So what you'll have to do is figure out how how long, how deep, how wide you want the landscape to be. So breaking away pieces to make it look more organic. You see, I've got two pieces there. I'm going to glue them together using Loctite's power grab. And I'm just going to sketch out where I might want uh, some craters. And you're essentially just creating a bunch of circles. Just cutting this out. And I'm going to try to bevel one of the edges so it looks like it's uh, sloping inward. And what I ended up having to do was uh, cut it in half because it got a little unruly. Created some grooves, uh, create some texture. And of course you can just uh, pick at it, create some divots uh, for some more texture, more detail. So I'm going to glue this in place. And then using some of the leftover pieces from that uh, crater I just built. I'll create a second smaller crater. Just arranging those again in a circle, gluing them together. Or you can just literally pick at the uh, styrofoam itself and uh, create some some little craters, a little detail here. So what you want to do is go online and search for lunar landscape or moon landscape. Or in this case, since I'm uh, also building the lunar module, you want to do a search for that. And what I did here was I wanted to leave the bottom part hollow so a, a smaller lizard or a tarantula could fit in there as far as a hide. But if you're creating this for a science project, obviously you don't have to do that. So you can see there the underside of it is hollow. It's got an entry and an exit. And really you're just, like I say, looking at pictures of uh, the lunar module, trying to get ideas. It's not exactly uh, the way the module looks. Here I've cut out a piece and then I've traced around it to create pieces just like it. Actually, uh, for the landing gear. So I'll glue these in place. I've got the little, uh, I guess, base to the landing gear, the little foot. And now we've got some grout. I've got non-sanded, uh, leftover gray colored grout from the castle. I mix this together with water so it's a little bit thicker than water as far as the consistency. So just covering the module there, and you want to make sure you turn everything upside down, get every single crevice. The, the grout strengthens the structure. Obviously, it makes it a lot more heavy. Um, it's essentially you're putting in a form of concrete, uh, putting in some cheap acrylic orange paint left over from the waterfall. And I do this for the second layer just to be able to differentiate uh, between the two layers, you can tell where you've left off. 
they wound up with this interesting gray-orange color. But the third and final layer, I just went with a straight uh, white, non-sanded grout. This is the lunar module is essentially 90% white, so that worked out. I didn't have to end up painting it because it was already white. So putting the third layer on the actual landscape. After I do that, I created a um, much thicker, I guess, batch of grout and put it here and there, not covering uh, everything, and then wait about 30 to 60 minutes. And here I'm using a toothbrush and putting in some divots, some extra detail. Uh, painting the lunar module at this point, it's essentially white, I used gray a little bit of black, uh, a little bit of blue, and then obviously the colors of the American flag. But you can decide just how much detail you want to put into this. So obviously looking at pictures online and of course it doesn't have to be the uh, the lunar module you can just create a random spaceship uh, but looking at pictures definitely helps here I've got a sharpie just putting in some fine detail creating some edges and just I guess random detail sort of starting to look a little bit like the lunar module of course nothing makes it look like the lunar module as much as putting the American flag on there. So trying to use some magic marker again. Didn't end up looking great, but you get the idea. Looks pretty good from a distance anyway. Here what I'm doing is just using some gray acrylic paint to go back over the landscape. Didn't The finish turned out a little splotchy. So I'm just going back over that, trying to cover up some mistakes. And here I'm using a 100% non-toxic acrylic sealant. And I'm going to end up putting four layers on each, the landscape and the lunar module. So usually I use a spray bottle, if you've watched these videos. Just using a brush for some reason, just to let you know, hey, you can do that or use the spray bottle. But there's several other sealants you can get. You just want to make sure you're getting a 100% non-toxic sealant. Non-toxic when it's uh, uh, dried or cured. Putting more of that sealant on here, and then I'm going to sprinkle some fine grain colored gray sand. Give some traction, plus it kind of counteracts the shininess. In the case of the module, I'm going to use white sand. Give some traction for the lizard or tarantula. and brush away some of the loose sand. And there you have it, a lizard lunar landscape. And if you haven't watched part one, you might want to do that for your pet lizard or for a school project.